Dante is in danger. It is easy to presume that Dante the character is traveling on a path without perils because he makes it clear at the outset that his journey is allegorical and represents the life of every man. Readers often think that in the story of the Divine Comedy, nothing can happen to him as a character because there's no real narrative of an actual physical journey. We assume he'll get home safely. After all, the lion and she-wolf and leopard at the beginning don't attack him physically. Canto 8 is the moment in which Dante the poet lets us see that Dante's physical safety is not guaranteed. Of course, physical danger indicates spiritual danger in the comedy. But now we see Dante's not just a spectator in the inferno. He's participating somehow in this journey, and unlike Virgil, he's not yet dead and is not incapable of injury. Several times in Canto 8, characters comment on the fact that Dante the Pilgrim is still a living, vulnerable human being. Coming after a more static Canto 7, Canto 8 is filled with action. Much of the action indicates Dante's danger. It also contains hints that the denizens of hell feel threatened by his presence, or perhaps simply want to entrap him. Imagine the effect of the lighting of the watchfires of the city of Dis on the newly arrived pilgrim. Dante the poet never has Virgil answer his questions about these signals, so they remain mysterious and threatening. Are there two fires to indicate two unwelcome arrivals, Dante Pilgrim and Virgil his guide? Are the watchfires lit for all arrivals or just specifically for them? In the gloom, the reader, like Dante, remains unenlightened, even if light has just inexplicably appeared in the utter dark. We share Dante's experience of confusion. We turn to Virgil as he does for confident action, reassurance, and we hope an ability to break through the blockade the taunting fallen angels refuse to lift. Virgil may prove weaker than his adversaries at this point, but Dante the writer still gives him a poignant authority as Virgil refers to the event of the harrowing of hell that traditionally also saw the demons of hell opposed to someone's entrance. In this case, however, it was Christ's as he descended to the dead after his death on the cross. Thus, Dante the writer likens the animosity Virgil and Dante encounter at the gates of Dis to that which greeted Christ, who overmastered the devils wanting to keep him out. Virgil knows the power of God can break through this obstacle. He may not have the power in himself, but he knows God does, and that all they have to do is wait for the assistance promised from heaven. Virgil may not be able to overcome the fallen angels, but he trusts that God who harrowed hell before can accomplish what he cannot. The moment is fraught with meaning. Virgil, who died without faith in the true God, shows faith in him here. Virgil, who was left behind when Jesus harrowed hell, explicitly recalls the harrowing as a promise for aid on Dante's journey and not as a sadness for himself. Virgil, who together with Dante read the inscription over the gate of hell, that inscription whose hopeless message applies to him and not to the living Dante, offers the proof of the open gate there as a sign of hope for Dante. Dante had found the words of the inscription hard or harsh, Virgil reminds him of Christ's power and mercy. Dante is building up the character of Virgil, investing him with deep pathos, even as he shows his weakness and foreshadows his loss. This canto also features the altercation between Filippo Argenti and Dante that makes us realize that Dante as a character is in physical danger in the poem. This event is one of the most controversial in the entire comedy because it's hard to determine from the cues Dante gives us if he and Virgil act properly here. Because Filippo seems to be trying to get into their boat or to capsize it, it seems right for Dante to push Filippo back into the river to which he has been condemned. However, commentators have for centuries noted that Dante might be demonstrating his own vengeful anger toward a personal enemy, a fact of which the writer is either unconscious or conscious. If he is unconscious of his own vindictiveness, Dante is using his poem to retaliate against Filippo. Legend says Filippo insulted him, perhaps even slapping Dante in the face, and that Filippo's brother profited by the confiscation of Dante's property when the poet was exiled from Florence. If Dante the writer is conscious of the potential meaning of Dante the Pilgrim's angry retaliation, however, the episode could mean one of two things. Either Dante believes Filippo truly was bad enough to deserve his punishment of being dismembered in the River Styx, and thus he would not have felt guilty for publicly humiliating his memory here, or Dante is engaged in some kind of self-examination in the circle of the wrathful. Dante the Pilgrim himself is violent toward Filippo in this episode, and moreover takes delight in the violence Filippo suffers as his punishment, saying that seeing Filippo being torn apart is a sight so pleasing to him that, quote, even now I praise and thank God for it, in line 60. Virgil had just quoted the gospel according to St. Luke, praising Dante for his deed of pushing Filippo back into the river. That is, Virgil addresses Dante the Pilgrim with words directed originally to Jesus, the Son of God, 
indicating that Dante's anger is righteous and his attitude toward the sinner pious. Because Dante had earlier erred in showing too much sympathy with Francesca and Paolo, many readers take this passage to mean Dante is now aligning himself with the way God sees sin. However, this canto also shows us Virgil blocked at the gates of Dis. And we also wonder if the Dante we just saw similarly blocked at the foot of the mountain six cantos ago has advanced so rapidly towards sanctity as to merit being identified with Jesus himself. Jesus responds to the praise he hears, yea, rather, blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Does Dante mean the pilgrim is keeping the words of God here or that he is not doing so by showing wrath, the sin punished in this very location in the inferno? As with many episodes in the Inferno, Dante leaves us without clear answers to our questions, merely forging ahead once God's angel, fanning away the mist and unpleasant fumes of hell, opens the locked gates with a mere touch of his wand. The angel is disdainful of the futile opposition of the denizens of Dis, but does nothing to increase their punishment, an attitude that also makes us reflect upon Dante's actions towards Filippo. As we near the end of the canto with its deliberate use of suspense, Dante Poeta turns to us and speaks to us, drawing us in as never before in the first few cantos of the Inferno. Pensa la tor, se io mi sconfortai nel suon delle parole maladette, che non credete ritornarci mai. Consider, reader, my dismay before the sound of those abominable words that I couldn't believe I'd ever return again. Dante shares his emotions with us and asks us to put ourselves in his place. Lest we think that Dante the Pilgrim is a mere spectator in the Inferno, the poet lets us know how much he feared for his future at that moment, a future which might have been spent in hell as prisoner. The thought of being stuck in hell is introduced to us in many ways in this cantica in order to defamiliarize the concept. Dante certainly knows the reader is aware of the teaching on the eternity of hell, but moments like this catch us unaware, and we are left to wonder if the, quote, accursed words are prophesying Dante's own fate. This strategy is one of many Dante uses to make the concept of being entrapped in hell less conventional, less dismissible than it is for anyone in the audience who is so used to the idea that it can become even a joke. Dante's awareness of his own peril as a character grows in the journey with Virgil. He's not even sure where he is at the outset. Now he knows there might not be a way out. This obstruction is terrifying. And even Virgil does not know what to do next. What does it mean to encounter an obstacle on the path to God? The Divine Comedy is full of stories about these obstacles, and the pilgrim Dante himself encounters many, even in the first few cantos of the Inferno. This is the first time, however, his guide has not known how to proceed, and many commentators point out that this is the first time Dante sees a weakness in Virgil. It is interesting that Dante did not want us to presume that this discovery would shake Dante's faith in and admiration for Virgil. On the contrary, as Dante's progress continues and Virgil's weaknesses become more apparent even as we move into purgatory, Dante's affection for his master will rather deepen and become more personal, more filial. However, if Virgil represents human reason, as some think, the halt at the gates of Dis means reason unassisted cannot deal with the evil that lies within.